Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we're going to be going over all the tools that have been used to uh, mount a whitetail deer. And uh, not only can we use these tools to mount a whitetail deer, but we can use them to do other different species of animals. Uh, we had a viewer comment in saying that uh, they'd like to see what type of tools we used on our uh, whitetail uh, shoulder mounting video. So we thought we'd break it down here and show you what was used, uh, what type of pins, what type of uh, brushes we used. So uh, let's get started by breaking this down and we'll go through all of them. Alright guys, we're going to go over these tools and uh, I'm going to start out with just some of the basic stuff as far as caping out a deer. Uh, one thing you want to make sure you have and that is a, a caliper like this. This comes in real handy for doing the eye to nose measurement. And what you'll do, you'll measure from the tip of that deer's nose up to his eye, to the front corner of his eye. And then you're, all, you're going to have to have a tape measure. And, uh, and once you do that, once you get your deer measure done, you can measure from here to here. And that'll give you your aid measurement for uh, ordering a form. Uh, another thing that you're gonna need uh, will be like a, uh, a tailor's tape, I guess you'd call it. Um, and that's so you can go around the deer's neck and a head junction to get your measurements to, uh, for when you're ordering a form. Um, you'll be doing two different measurements there. You'll be doing the B measurement and then the C measurement, which the that's across the atlas of the neck. Uh, moving on, you're going to have to have uh, obviously a scalpel, blade, scalpel with a handle and a blade, or if you, you can use a knife. I, I use both. I, use, I go between, back and forth, you'll see on the videos, I go in between them. Uh, you need a big flathead screwdriver. This right here comes in real handy uh, when you're going around the horn burr, when you're, when you're skinning the, the uh, you're caping the head out, you can use a screwdriver to go down between the horn burr and the, right there on the pedestal and work that skin. Uh, out around so you get the head skint down. Uh, moving on from there, once you once you get past that point and uh, you get your deer tanned, uh, you're going to be using the multiple uh, tools. There'll be uh, these these here are the stout roughers. Uh, if, if you watch the uh, the deer uh, form prep video, these are used. I use these to rough up the form so that we get good adhesion between the uh, hide and the form. And also, you can use these as, as a hide puller. Uh, you can this, this you can reach in and grip the hide, and as you're taxing your skin around, these right here work real well for that. Um, obviously, the, the the thin rougher that gets that's more of the for the detail areas in the face, around the eyes, around the mouth. Uh, I, I use it a lot in the brisket of the deer, down in the armpits, in the real tight spots. Uh, another thing you use is a little file like this. This comes in handy for like if you've seen those earbuds I use. They're a plastic earbud. And sometimes those forms, they might not be perfectly uh, flat where you want to attach that butt. So you can use these uh, files to file that foam down, rasp it down. Uh, if you got any mold uh, flashing on the form, and what that is, the flashing is where the two, two mold pieces go together to actually mold the form. It'll leave a line. Sometimes it'll stick up. Some, some's worse than others, but uh, this is a good thing to use to file that down. Uh, also, you've seen on the, the white tail mounting video, the hide stretcher. Uh, you can get these at any of your taxiderm stores, uh, taxiderm suppliers. But it's got, you know, uh, six real sharp teeth here. And you can use, you can hold that and really, you know, grip that hide as you're sliding it down the form and moving that skin around. Uh, moving on from there, uh, once a lot of these tools here is what you're going to use once you get the hide on, get it all mounted up. Uh, one thing I, I missed that should have went on with the uh, the tape measure stuff. This is a this is an ear opener. Uh, when you're after you cake the deer head out, you'll you'll stick this up inside the deer's ear and separate the cartilage and from the skin, so you can invert the ears and get them ready to be salted and tanned. Um, once you get past the point of, of of putting your hide on and everything, then we're going to be moving over and, and getting into some of these. Uh, these other little tools, your pick tools, uh, your uh, needle point tools, your, your small fine brushes. So I'm going to move over here to the other side and we'll start on that. Alright, once you get the hide put on the form, then you're, like I said, you're going to get into these other tools here. Uh, you got this little, little awl type tool. I use this to adjust the skin on the face. Yeah, I mean, you can, I, like you can see in like my eye mounting video, I use the point of this to set the front of the eye. You can actually use these to push the pins in too. As, uh, as you're mounting these deer, you're gonna be applying pins to the, uh, to the tear, uh, tear ducts and to the uh, eyelids. Also, uh, 
this little handy tool here this is like a brad setter a little pin setter and the way this thing works is you'll put a pin in it or a brad and uh, you put it up there on the surface of the deer and as you push it it actually drives the pin into the form and uh, it don't matter if you mount one or two deer a week or ten this right here will save your fingers from all that pushing and poking on them pins it it'll make your finger sore so this right here is a lifesaver when it comes to that um, we also we you know use a lot of different size little paint brushes these they use these to, like once you get the skin mounted on the eye uh you can go in and use this to clean the, cl the clay residue off uh i've used it to cl clean high paste off sometimes on the second day that high paste it'll kind of seep out and it, it kind of gets uh it's not real uh completely dried up solid it's kind of it's kind of thick so you can take a brush sometimes and just kind of brush it off and clean it off um, we use these little like a toothbrush i use that for a lot of the times when i do the detail work to clean the paint out of the hair uh, another thing is uh, an air stapler uh, you can use an air stapler or if uh, you don't have an air stapler to and i'm and i'm referencing to when you would staple the back of the hide to the back of the form uh, if you ain't got an air stapler to do that part you can use just a regular old hand stapler and staple as long as it keeps that skin held down there if you got that high plate paste on there it's going to lock it into place it ain't going to move uh, another thing we use is uh, super glue. Uh, you, we use a ton of super glue for uh, you know different things. We can uh, like, when we, like when we're sewing and we tie a knot, uh, use this uh, silicone based uh, silicone coated thread, like over here on this roll. Silicone coated thread it'll slide through the hide real easy. But you want to make sure you use super glue to lock the knots down so the knots don't slip. Uh, another thing we use is epoxy sculpt. We like you saying when we done the epoxy around the outer bases that helps locks the skin off and then we got a, 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 a big assortment of different types of uh, needles for sewing uh, you got your big s i don't know if it's going to show up on camera or not but you got the you got this big s needle here uh, that's that's one I, I, I actually sew with two of these i put one in each side of the the, the hide as i'm sewing around the hornbirds uh, and like i said you, you're going to use lots and lots of pins uh, I mean, I, I use these around the eyes and the tear ducts, um, you know, different areas. Another thing, I mean, you got, I don't know if you can see in the video over here, we got the bucket of hide paste uh, and rags or paper towels. And these right here, I, I like using these, these Scott rags come in a box. Um, those work real good, not only for, you know, tucking in the nostrils, but just cleaning up here in the shop, cleaning up the table, like you get hide paste on your hands or, or you got clay. That's a, that's, you know, something like that. You're going, you're going to have some good rags to keep that cleaned up because you definitely don't want that in the hair of the animal you're working on. Um, you want to make sure that you, uh, you, have, you have a good, good cordless drill comes in handy. I mean, you got to have that for applying the, the horns and stuff on the form. But uh, other than that, the only other thing is uh, that I would have to be going over, I'll go over airbrushes and uh, paints and uh, the epoxy and stuff I use around the eyes that'll be coming up in a video here in the future So uh, if y'all have any questions, just shoot me a shoot me a message here on YouTube uh, We've had a lot of people, you know, adding comments and stuff and uh, I really enjoy trying to answer all the questions If I can I try to answer all of them uh, on the uh, on YouTube there and uh, So I just, as always, I just want to tell you thanks for watching and God bless